So it depends on how old you are and what your medical problems are. But what I did do, because I, I kept telling everyone there's no magic solution for everyone. Everyone's different. Um, and no one would accept that answer. So I came up with my, my ideal list, which I call the panacea. Um, and this, of course, is in book one. And I've got a few additives now to this. But at, at baseline, anyone over 40 should be on the panacea. And this is it's easy to remember because I'm really good with mnemonics. So the P, panacea, stands for pterostilbene, which is the cousin of resveratrol. They're both sirtuin activators. And they do a variety of other things as well. Um, but this is step one. you got to turn your sirtuins back on. Um, there was one paper that suggested that pterostilbene was not as good as if you had increased uh, cholesterol. So it's, it was one, one paper. I don't know if it's true or not. Anyway, choice is generally resveratrol or pterostilbane. Um, we need to make sure that we get one that's bioavailable because otherwise the resveratrol bioavailability is very low. Um, but they are making it in like new packaging, nanomycetes, et cetera, that does make it significantly better. But that's agent one. So everyone needs to be on one of the two of those. Um, EA, panacea, A is for astaxanthin. Astaxanthin is the most amazing free radical scavenger that we have. It comes from algae that are angry. They're pissed off by their environment. They create this orange goo that makes the, allows that cell to survive under stressful conditions. And it honestly does the same thing for us. Um, anyone can take any, I guess usually it's anywhere between uh, four to 12 milligrams. There's no harm in taking any more of that, I wouldn't imagine. Uh, unfortunately, it does make things pink. Um, anything pink in the marine system is probably because of astaxanthin. So roseate spoonbills or feathers are pink because of, uh, of this stuff. Quail eggs or quail eyes are red because of this. Uh, salmon is red because of astaxanthin. So I think the only fear of taking too much astaxanthin is turning colors. But if you're okay with that, then sky's the limit. Um, so PAN and nicotinamide is the next one. Most people under 40 are nicotinamide deficient. Um, within the last year or so, they came out with a home kit. So for the low price of 300 bucks, you can find out what your nicotinamide level is. Um, I would assume that anyone over 40 is going to be statistically low. It's just a matter of how deficient you are. Um, the, the world knows for the most part, or longevity people know that everyone's deficient. So there's a war on to get you to take their type. So there's nicotinamide riboside, there's nicotinamide mononucleotide. Those are the two orals. Um, and then you can get uh, nasal sprays, trans, transdermal patches, you can get injections, you can get your IV dose. It probably doesn't make a whole lot of difference how you get your nicotinamide as long as you get your nicotinamide. Um, so that's let's uh, PAN. And then there's two C's. There's carnosine. Carnosine is a natural dipeptide that we all have in our bodies. So this is actually uh, a supplement. Uh, and not an adjuvant because we're supplementing our own uh, internal source. Men have more than women and young people have more than old people. So by the time you're an older lady, you are carnosine deficient. Uh, vegetarians are gonna be carn carnosine deficient because it comes from uh, uh, mostly uh, meat products, especially like turkey and chicken and that sort of stuff. Um, but what it does is it's a transglycosylating agent. So it is, reduces the damage done by glucose in your cells. So, Glycation is, is one of this major problems, depending on if you're diabetic or not a pre-diabetic, but we all love glucose. But by reducing the damage done and reducing the AGE load, um, that's only beneficial. So the top five has to include some sort of transglycosylating agent. And then lastly in this pile is carnosine, no, I'm sorry, uh, curcumin. Curcumin is one of the best anti-inflammatory agents we have. And again, it does other things as well, but um, it's super amazing in terms of uh, reducing uh, your inflammasome. And the problem, of course, is that the bioavailability is limited. So there's been a war raging for the last decade, probably to make it more bioavailable. So if anyone is interested in buying it, you need to write, read the label and it'll say high bioavailability. Um, I'm not out to push any brands. I could really care less. Uh, but if it's going to help you, you can't take the regular stuff. It has to be high bioavailability. Um, so that's top five of the standard panacea. Um, what I would add to that now, um, three years later would be quercetin and, um, spermidine and probably lactoferrin. So we'd make it top eight instead of top five. Uh, and the reason I say that is spermidine 
is the strongest thing to A, protect your DNA, but B, uh, it induces autophagy. And we didn't have one of those before. Um, lactoferrin is amazing because it does several things. Number one, it boosts your immune system. And two, it reduces AGE levels. So that's crucial. Uh, and then quercetin is important because it gets rid of senescent cells and it blocks against uh, COVID, viral, COVID viral replication within your cells. So ta-da, there you go. There we go. Top, so, top eight. So I would like to go back to one or two in there. So mm -hmm. you talked about uh, NR, NMN, uh, well, nicotinamide. So yes. we have those two, which are indeed there is a war. But um, what about niacin or nicotinamide? Do you need to have one of these uh, more complex molecules? Um, I don't think you do. Um, people seem to have a lot of trouble with niacin. Uh, obviously they get the non-flushing uh, type if they can. Some people swear it works for them. Other people, it doesn't really. Um, it's, it's actually a very, very, very good question. It's also a very, very complicated question. Um, I can tell you that it's absolutely, you know, you need to increase your NAD levels somehow. So the easiest thing to do is either the NR and the NMN. Um, and then if you don't want to go down that route, niacin is probably okay, but I just don't have the evidence to guarantee that it's going to work for everyone. So I saw a talk that you did. In fact, you kind of mentioned a little bit earlier. So rapamycin. Oh yeah. I, I would just be interested in, uh, so do, do you still not like rapamycin or what are your thoughts on that? So, so it's clear that partial inhibition of the mTOR system is beneficial right? We, we, you know, you see all the rat studies, clearly they're doing better. Their skins are prettier. They're running around. It's fantastic. Um, it's blocking rapid turnover of cells, right? That's what the mTOR pathway does. It's, it's a pathway of youthfulness and it blocks rapid turnover. So there's evidence in rodent models that it can cause sarcopenia and memory loss. Mm. And it's really hard to ask a rat what they remember, uh, but there is evidence that you get hippocampal shrinkage. And I, you know, in this whole war against aging and as a physician, right, do no harm first. And I really have concerns that we don't know how to manage the rapamycin to reduce the risk of memory loss. I just think that's, that's playing with fire and there, and there may be ways of doing it. I just don't think we have them yet. And I'm not completely convinced that I'm worth, I'm, I'm not going to take the risk and I don't want to encourage other people to do so either. I know people are on some low dose once a week, dosing of the rapamycin. Um, rat studies have just demonstrated that it's risky. Um, and there are many things that can partially block mTOR. I'm a big fan of metformin. It's a partial M4 inhibitor. I think it's fantastic. I think there are other things that are partial inhibitors of mTOR. And at the moment, I think that partial inhibition is going to be the best way out of this uh, until we have better answers um, in terms of how we're going to block mTOR. Okay. So you, you mentioned metformin. The thing is metformin is a prescription drug in yep. most places. But it's, but it's so easy to get. It's so easy to get. Anyone can get metformin. It's cheap as dirt. Uh, the, the, you know, rest benefit profile is, is fantastic. You know, you probably have some GI upset. Everyone complains about diarrhea for the first two weeks. Um, and, and then you're fine and it's so easy to get. There's so many websites that you can go to and get that it's not a big deal. And I think more and more physicians are sort of handing it out like candy anyway. Right. I, I just don't really see that as a huge obstacle to overcome. Okay. On these supplements, one other thing. So we did talk a little bit about bioavailability, and this does seem to be a an issue with a lot of these, that it's like getting them into the body is, is the biggest thing, and getting them past the liver, because the liver likes oh, yeah. to destroy everything. I mean, how can we increase the bioavailability? And have you... And what about kind of some of the newer methods, like liposomes? Do, do you see these? I, lo I love liposomes. I love them. Um, I take liposomal vitamin C. I take a variety of those. I think it's brilliant. And I love the nanomycels. Um, again, I don't like to push brands, but I love Rev Genetics because they put uh, their agents in nanomycels. And for example, my curcumin comes in a nanomycel. And I know, I mean, it says it's, you know, 277 times on the bottle because the number is huge when you look at it. But I know for a fact that if I take three a day, I start turning yellow. 
So I know, just, you know, there you go. There's your subjective answer. I know that it is getting into me and I can feel that it's working. So I'm, I'm pretty convinced that these new ways of harnessing uh, the entry is, is it's working. It's totally working, but it, it like, it pains me. I went to the grocery store uh, Thanksgiving morning, like a moron. And I got stuck in this ridiculously long line, but the line happened to be going through the supplement aisle. So I stood there for quite a while staring at these supplements and there literally were four rows of curcumin, but none of them said anything about bioavailability. None of them. And I, I, I it was, it was, it was astounding that people are buying these things and they're not going to do anything. So, I mean, I think that's like a big thing that, that you can sort of help educate the public for. Taking it is not good enough. You have to take the right one, right? Yeah. So it, it's, it's a complex decision. And if anything is in these nano capsulization schemes, I don't know if one's better than the other, but they seem to be. I mean, they just seem to be better than like no encapsulation whatsoever. 